don't stop now. Listen to that inner voice. Friendship! Welcome to my humble abode. I am Yogi the Tail Spinner, and this is Tales of a Coffee. And we start the day together with a narrative tale and a cup of coffee in the hope of welcoming a blessed day. And have confidence. We turn now to not a broadcast. And day eight, a second broadcast. Let's hope the party advance liked our responses, shall we? And it's Dave having a party. Should we play this? Is it safe? No, we shouldn't. Uh, Alan James. Crazy... Oh, Crazy Neil. Alan James, who was even crazier than Crazy Neil. And... I'm going to do Jude Kushan. Uh, right, you can see they finally got the old headline system up and working again. And the vision mix is already in headline mode because... Headlines always come at a start. It's really simple, mate. These two buttons at the bottom of the vision mixer, you can see they now have A and B on them. And they're to help you pick image A on the left bottom screen here, or image B on the right bottom screen here. It's really simple. This little clock here will count down the number of seconds you have to make your decision. Provided you make a decision in that time, you're fine. And you can change your mind as much as you want until the clock reaches zero. But sounds if you don't good make to any me. decision, you'll be fired before you even get to make another choice. That don't sound good. I just good want good. to say one more thing, mate. The pictures you choose to show of these people, well, that's how the public is going to perceive them, and that's going to affect their lives. So like with the adverts, choose carefully. No, and we're off. Good luck, mate. Okay. Before okay. I get time, I'll call you okay. back in the next break. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm coming, darling. Says gets really hot. Is this Janet who thinks dogs have their own secret language? All right, let's line the feed up. Ten seconds, everybody. Not the best source of consumer advice, then. Don't blame me when it explodes. Going in five, four, three. All right, Jeremy. Uh, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly... We don't like Advance. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinker. With the country's wealth creators in a state of panic and unfavorable rumblings already heard from overseas, I'll be asking my guests whether Advance can deliver on even a fraction of their manifesto promises. Out with the old, Remington's fist have appointed Sophia Remington as their new... Oh, CEO. she looks like an idiot. The following photo, taken from our archive, Gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes yeah, she shouldn't be in charge with company at 23. In history, Sophia Remington's appointment is a risk for the giant mega corporation. Sophia, as our regular viewers will be aware, has always been a wild child and has been romantically linked to several movie stars and sports personalities. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehouse. Sophia promises it'll be all the rage. That's an advert we chose to reject. Have been raised about the product safety, making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Svorsborg and Horgensford. Scientists will favour them. Dante's taint. Science is a future. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flood technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. This is, of course, only the latest in a series of successful expeditions for this unlikely pairing. In a joint statement about the dangers their team might face, the pair stated, We will face the plentiful challenges together like we always have. Playing the field, rumors abound as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush. Hamsleeves, first out of the year, so we'll support him the for now. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week. As reported by this very program. 
Johnny is teen here with socialite and performance artist Tiffany Lamour, whose recent show, Snatched Inside, Inside My Snatch, has kept her firmly in the public eye. Could romance be on the cards for these two budding anisters? And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around that the That looks more violent. Talk with people actually, that looks like police brutality. With more and more powers passing to the police, and less and less oversight, are we using an advanced shaped sledgehammer to... There we go. Get them buried. A mega move for the group of young actors who are already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Oh, wow. Hang on. Almost missed the static. Uh, we're going to be dropping into one. In the wake of the government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about advances first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised, but what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves. We're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Whiteman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. There we go. I think that Vance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth go is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan? It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd. Ignorant, sterile, and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is... Shamelessly self-promoting? That's him. Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last Great War. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't... And this will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno-brainwashing, we'll be laughing then. That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. <laughs> yes, advance are radical, Oops. and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! But what this young lady doesn't understand I miss a is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, ah. Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly Wide funding shot. our public services, they're already, Back to her. they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research and the arts. Oh, Alice, we're we'll moving. Franken science and OP arts. Like Wide. See? Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This is the issue. Alan? It's all coming from the water, the chemicals. They're pumping it full of belief juice. Don't get me wrong. I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, uh, what does the future look like to you? A big space go. where we've all been figuratively sodomised into submission. Oh, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. Looking good. Although we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, 
Thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Megan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the I got the ad. News. We got the ad going. One minute back. Beautiful. You know, I think they might do some good. I hope so too, Jeremy. How much are you being paid by them then? Oh, shut the fuck up, Alan. I've never heard so much shit in my life. <laughs> this is our well, face, so I don't need sense. Shit, won't we? Alan, I can explain it to you, but unfortunately, I can't understand it for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I've got to use that sometimes. Is that a better word? And that's all I can do. All right. Well, Wait that's second, that. Everybody, is Whittle Jakey scared of the big bad culture with water? Gonna cut to there. It's shortly five, four, five, four, three. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Yeah, yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Uh, well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed doing good, in this doing good. Uh, We're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh -oh. so there simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. Right. We need more support from ministers. We, uh, what are you doing? We need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. Just hang on. Not a good time while I'm chasing this stuff. The problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Ooh. Well, it, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Judge. We need, uh, we need legislation made it, made it, to relieve the pressure on our public servants. Sorry servant. to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving him? Yes, I uh, totally understand. Quite the well, picture of a burdened what? legal sector there. Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. And Police Chief Constable Bob Peel, a man with a very different perspective on our nation's crime. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? Oh, I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your oh, community stop that. Oh, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug uh, with a knife here we are. or cosh. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it oh, it's going up, not, to moral not decay. Bedding. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. There we country. are. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And to what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. Oh, well, that's nice. Arrival, look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh! Oh, bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, a bloody gimps escaped. <laughs> Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? Oops. As I was saying, Jesus you'll be there. Like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral yes. decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. I'm back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with okay. this. Oh, sorry, darling. I was staying the badgers. Yes, yes, I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh, in the box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Thank you. Chasing and experience again. And who's responsible to use it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people. Darling, where's the padlock? Oh, hold on just a moment. Where's the padlock? Good God. Can't wait to watch this one back. Clive, I am not having this again. Mummy said, get back in your kids. Naughty, 
you beast cut. As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Oh, great. Thank you, Bob. Bob Peel there. We're really locking down the police's position on morality for us. And finally tonight, hopefully uninterrupted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault. Oh dear Lord, this isn't going to be good. Menacing a swap. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Many happy Cheers, returns, Jez. Tony. Call me titwank, Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwank, Tony. Hey! Prison's a mixed bag. Structure's quite nice, but it's a constant battle against institutionalisation, as you can imagine. And obviously, titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwank, Tony. Hey! Yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Good bunch of lads. Not much going on. OK, well, we're trying that you get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Tit wank Tony! Whee! I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. Soap yeah, I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. Big Chris. Little Chris. And Vampire Chris. <laughs> Oh, I, the show's come. This one's, yeah? Yep. One sec, love. Don't ever ask me to do this. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, who's this guy? You are joking. Chrissy Freeball has only got Mr. Fancy, oh. Not now, fellas, I'm on the news. It seems, it seems like we've caught you at a bad time. Oh, little boy. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Jesus. Yes, we uh, seem to be losing the signal here, no Tony. No fucking way, let's <laughs> Well, we're just trying to get the signal back. I think we... <laughs> yes, Tony. Well, that, that's an exciting party. Well, hopefully you, the viewer at home, have managed to gain a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues. I'm not sure we've got a broader understanding of anything except how to have a party. We'll be live with some plucky young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back, everybody. Advert lined up. That went well. Piss off. Uh, mate, I ain't got long and I'm quite drunk. It's been a great night. In this, this next time. section, there's a bit of music. If you edit in time with the music, you can oh, see that's not gonna happen. the vision mixer, and the public will love that. Don't worry if you don't. Know. I don't have any them. For it or nothing. Just try and stay in the groove. Also, one last tip. When the music starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music bit. God, I love it. I ain't music. got rhythm. I ain't got music. And my love's asleep right now, so... I'm sure he's on his way. Come on, it's welcome back. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is on you. Ten seconds, everybody. We're going to open on Megan. Camera two. Camera two. Five. Got it. Three. And Welcome in we back. go. I'm Megan Wolf, and on tonight's Culture Spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College who today received a grant from Advance to take their play, Hey, Friendship, on a tour of local secondary schools. Welcome to you all. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Winstanley Dash Hamilton. Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're overwhelmed, to be honest. <laughs> and I believe you two are sisters, is that right? Yes, yeah, Charlotte's my oldest. I'm the older, more popular one. <laughs> okay. 
the Harriet and Trey were really the ones oh, who came up with the whole idea. Yeah. So, Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria and I said, hey, let's actually do some boxing. So I went to look for a drama teacher. Uh, but she'd been laid off due to budget cuts. Go to Paul, why? I directed a pantomime when and I was at university, so, so I knew the ropes as it were. Oh, right, yes, but you're the maths teacher, aren't you? Uh, yes, that's me. Into Jeff him direct. Algebra, maths teacher. Maths is really important. Oh, thanks, Steve. Maths is really important. Yes. Go wide. As is theatre. Go into her. Start problems in history, Aristotle. I just think that when we travel around all these problem schools, go wide. Poor kids see us. They say, hey. I really want to be like those attractive kids. And that's a very beautiful I'm going to three. and powerful thing. We touch our audiences and they touch us right back. I'm sure you enjoyed that. I suppose that. with a surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. Yes. <laughs> we just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And teach people about the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? That's right. To put into context, I play a young first year who's having a wide shot at school. Focus on them. Doesn't actually have a name, yeah, because in a way she's like all of us. It's like a metaphor. Maybe she's you at home, or like, maybe she's you, Megan. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Put it in, coach. Yes, thanks, Steve. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to have a little chat with your teacher while you run off and get ready. I can't wait to see it. OK, we're going to be going live on some music soon. <laughs> That's it, that way. <clears throat> if you can call it that, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, it's a high school play. So, Jeff, when did you first hear about the grants? Uh, two days ago. A letter from Advance arrived at the school. Now, Two the and three right now. thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin and brought it to me. How? How did you react? I also threw it in the bin. But then Harriet and Trey rescued it, and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page, and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. Do you know what? It's funny, because Angela and I don't usually vote. We we're not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic mainly. But wow. we did used to watch that Peter Clements DIY show back in the day, and so we thought, uh, why not? Let's have a go with this old democracy thing. Oh, okay. and here we bally well are. <laughs> Good stuff. Fucking brilliant. So let's have a look at a short section of Hey, friendship. Got a one. Get ready to go on her and in we go. Dear diary, Dear diary, I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. Another day of tears. 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 Another day of fears. 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 But still I walk the corridors alone. But still I walk the alone. Corridors alone. alone. Dreading what might be around alone. every corner. What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi Gary. Oh heavens no! It's Gary the Fist! Oh, no. Gary, Gary the Fist! Gary the Fist! Going somewhere, little first year? Great! I've been looking for some poor victim to bully all morning. But will this make me feel better about my violent father? Violent father. Excuse me. I play for maths. It's my favourite subject. And so important. And so important. Or two. Maths is for losers. What? Maths is for losers. My arm's stuck, Maths coach. Keep going for fuck's sake. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, Maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? Not today, Gary the Fist. What do you mean, not today? Who are you? Uh, my arm's free, coach. Brilliant, keep going. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I, Gary the Fist. And you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. But, but, I can't fight all three of you. Well, you could try. I don't have any friends of my own. Here we are, going into her. And I'm four as well. Take a look at me. 
Take a little look at my face. I'd rather not. I could be you. She could be you. And you could be me. Or you could be me. Life can be cheeky. Three. Two. One. Four. On him. And three. One. Two. And. Flip. There we are. There we are on three. Nice. No Who said middle class girls can't rap? You did. Kids, I'm Gary the Fist. People think folks like me probably shouldn't exist. But that's just prejudice. And I'd do better if you knew the way that I became Gary, Gary the Fist. I grew up on a council estate. The park was hip, but the flats weren't great. My dad used to come home drunk and late. And he'd hit my mum for dinner. He had to wait. Oh, where's my dinner? Oh. Wrong. I guess life's pretty hard on a council estate. 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 It's so damn hard on a council estate. Life can be cheeky. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, that's all we have time for tonight on the <laughs> National Nightly News. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. My name's Jeremy Donaldson. Line up the app. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> what the literal fuck was that? I believe that was art. I believe I've got a 14-inch cock, but it doesn't make it so. I have a similar belief about an adequate paycheck. Oh! Oh, someone please get these twats out of my studio. <laughs> All right, you know where we go next. Let's see what we've done. D, A, and A plus. We've got a B grade. That's not bad. You've received your full wages. Current wealth broadcast for shares none. All right, now then, broadcast. Let's have a watch back of the Fallout broadcast. Take a look at what's in store tonight on Channel One. <laughs> at least Taking number one, one was bad. Schedule is yeah, a we'll retrospective do the of the best moments from Peter Clements, Just the Job, reminding us just how our new Prime Minister became so popular in the first place. Following that, at 9pm, Megan Wolfe sits down for an exclusive interview with former Prime Minister Jacob Hamilton Mann, in truth to power and she'll be asking him where it all went so horribly wrong <laughs> i'll certainly be tuning in for that finally tonight at 10 p.m it's a bit of escapism with lawrence blunderclatch's acclaimed action movie bullet man taking us up to the national weather report and close down at a quarter past midnight but before all that it's time to go over to jeremy donaldson for tonight's national nightly news good evening i'm jeremy donaldson our main headlines tonight Destination unknown? At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this charge. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinker. With the country's mm -hmm. wealth creators in a state of panic and unfavorable rumblings already heard from overseas, yeah, I chose a good I'll one to make them look bad. 
whether Advance can deliver on even a fraction of their manifesto promises. Out with the old... Bit of a wobble Remington there, on the interference. Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, taken from our archive, gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. Sophia Remington's appointment is a risk for the giant mega corporation. Sophia, as our uh, gambler will be aware, Wonderful. has always been a wild child and has been romantically linked to several movie stars and sports personalities. In her first press conference this afternoon, on the Sophia static. announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehugs. Sophia promises it will be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety. Making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Swarsborg and Horgensport have today set off to explore Dante's tank. I hope Jen the Dante enjoys it. The cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flood technology, the pair hope to successfully reach what the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. This is, of course, only the latest in a series of successful expeditions for this unlikely pairing. In a joint statement... Well, let's it's hope it's successful again. Case, the pair stated, We will face the plentiful challenges together like we always have. Playing the field, rumours abound as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleep that boy, Johnny Ham sleeps. leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, as reported by this very programme. Johnny is seen here with socialite and performance artist Tiffany Lamour, Tiffany whose Lamour. recent show, Snatched Inside, Inside My Snatch, has kept wow. her firmly in the public eye. Could romance be on the cards for these two budding anisters? <laughs> and grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? Very. Are they going live? Be afraid. The country, be very afraid. The people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. With more and more powers passing to the police, and less and less oversight, are we using an advanced shaped sledgehammer to crack a nut? All that, a mega move for the group of young actors who are already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing <coughs> later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Seconds back. So far, that's not too bad. Not good, but it's not too bad. Well, that's just the intro. I think I completely forgot about the interference at one point, didn't I? In the wake of the announcement of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me at Katie Brightman, a leading economist. And Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, Our conspiracy The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised. But what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves. We're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Vance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Conspiracy theories are always Alan, better at grabbing the interest than Alan James is someone right, explaining things Jeremy. calmly. We're to become Rational. the great herd. Ignorant, sterile and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is... Shamelessly self-promoting? <laughs> Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world's powers have faced since the last Great War. Yes, it's the worst, Katie's most disruptive right. threat war this country has. Thank you, but that isn't. And what's this happened. will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking out of the wrong orifices. Mock me all you like, Jeremy. Didn't we have them back in World War II next second in Hiroshima? To their camps for hypno brainwashing, who will be laughing then? That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. 
Yes, advance are radical and change is always frightening. But the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a what degree of poverty. Bollocks! What this young Oops, lady yeah, doesn't that understand, one. Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. He's not wrong. You're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. Mm. The grooming of an entire generation. I can't believe I'm falling for the conspiracy theories. eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already, un they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research and the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Frankenscience and Opiates. <laughs> like opiates, see? Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Ellen? This is the issue! It's all coming from the water, the chemicals, they're <laughs> pumping it full of... All right, now he's lost Don't me. Don't get me wrong, I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, um, what does the future look like to you? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomised into submission. Oh, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Meghan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming. Oh, did I switch out so quick? Whatever. Is crazy Neil's festive Yule Here's our crazy Neil again. So you've got the best Christmas tree that your money can buy, and you want to put on it some crazy ass Christmas ornaments. We want to give you oh, a spectacular this, Neil. Christmas cactus. You know what it's like? You've run out of things to dress up, and you want your house to look like a Christmas barn has hit it. Then we've got the ornaments for you. You want something like vases, or phases, or another cactus to go with your first cactus, or this, a crazy Christmas barn, or a toad. What becker? Uh, no. No. Hey, they're they're different animals. ornaments. Got all the seasonal animals. Crazy Neil. Crazy Neil. This is a clear out of the storage locker that second Mrs. Neil abandoned. Like she abandoned <laughs> the children. It's a rainbow of crazy deals. <laughs> wow. Personal problems much. Quick. Grab yourself a crazy deal with Neil Appeal. Wow. That boy's got some personal Welcome issues. Back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Oh, we yes, can see I've some problems close up, all right? What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to... And you thought a public pro proposition was a embarrassing we... a pro proposal, rather. What are you doing? <laughs> well, we need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. I'm leaving. Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. Just hang on. Never is it? That's Hello, not... The, the problem something. isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just, just hang just on and you put it in the hole. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Oh! Well, it, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about... Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Judge. We need... Uh, we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public servants. Sorry servant. to interrupt the news, Mr Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving him? Yes, I uh, totally understand. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there. Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, a, he's in trouble. Peel, a man with a very different perspective on our nation's Oh, it's different, all right. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? 
I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the no, risk of being that's terrorized not what you meant by to some do. thug with a knife. Uh, or kosh. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it all comes down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the God, author noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. <laughs> and to what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. Yeah, so he's one of them. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, <laughs> on a moment. Jeremy, a bloody gimps escaped. <laughs> Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? As I was saying, Oops, Jesus didn't like light. immigrants much, did he? And what? Just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible what are you talking for about? the moral oh, yes. decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Uh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. Oh, sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh. in the box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Thank you. Good. Back in your gift space. And you back go in your gift space. to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people. Ooh, oh, racism too. There we are. Oh, hold on just a moment. Oh, Clive, this simply won't do. Naughty, naughty, naughty boy. Mummy said get Clive, I am not having this again. Mummy said get back in your kids. No, naughty, uh, you beast. I mean, go kinky by all means, but. Decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs. That's because you're terrorizing the old oh, Sylvie. Bob Peel there, really locking down the police's we'll slap him. morality for us. And finally tonight, hopefully uninterrupted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault, burglary, and menacing a swap. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Oh, Cheers, good old Jess. take wank, Tony. Call me <laughs> Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Can you tell <laughs> us what it's like in prison, Tony? Take wank, Tony. Hey! It's that delete. Prison's a mixed bag. It structure's quite nice, but it's a constant battle against institutionalization, as you can imagine. And obviously, Tit wanks hard to I come completely missed that one. Picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Tit Tony. Hey! Almost yeah, got that. Sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Good bunch of lads. Okay, well, we're trying that you get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this: Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Tit wank Tony. And hey! I missed that one completely. I don't think it's as wow. easy as that, Jez. So fun. I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. Big Chris. Oi, oi. Little Chris. Oi, oi. And Vampire Chris. <laughs> <laughs> ah, now that part is hotting up, isn't it? One sec, love. Shit, when Tony's on the news. Fresh out of jail and he's got a, a cop stripper. Rehabilitation's difficult with the okay. current system, Jess. Just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, who's this Open. You are joking. Chrissy Free has only got Mr. Fancy, oh. Hey, I got the bollocks. Not now, fellas, I'm on the news. It's so... Uh, why don't it's I go to like parties like, like this? Time. <laughs> the little boy. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Jesus! Yes, we uh, seem to be losing the signal no, here, Tony. Way left, well, we're just trying to get that signal back. I think we. Yes, Tony. Tony, I mean we're literally. Really really why don't I ever get to go to parties like this? Well, hopefully you, the viewer at home, have managed to gain a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues around law and order. After the break, Megan will be live with some plucky young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. I mean, I've never had a, One ba a barbershop quartet at any party I've been to. Alan I feel Jay like I'm neglected. Alan Jay. 
Alan James. Alan James is right. Alan James is right. I'm Alan James. Alan James is right in front of you. I don't want to scare you, but you should be scared. There must be something in the food! I don't want to upset you, but you should weep for the world. They're gonna <laughs> take your poor sweet grandma. And I don't mean to shock you, but... You need to wake up! I'm Alan James, and I'll slap you so hard with the truth, you'll still be picking facts out of your face the following Wednesday! <laughs> Alan James, coming to a city near you. I really need a lot of these phrases. Dates and times. I'll slap you so hard with the truth, you'll be picking facts at your Welcome face Black. next Wednesday. I'm Megan Wolf, and okay. on tonight's Culture Spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries I don't these people of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College, who today received a grant from Advance to take their play... So they're taking from the wealthy to give to things like... I mean... Schools. Welcome to you all. How wealthy doing any more with it? with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Winstanley dash hamilton Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're over overwhelmed to be honest <laughs> and I believe you two are sisters is that right yes yeah, Charlotte's my oldest I'm the older more popular one. <laughs> oh god who oh, haven't we all had people like that in our life with the brothers or friends really the ones who came up with the whole idea oh, the sisters, yes. so Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria and I said hey let's actually do something so I went to look for a drama teacher uh, but she'd been laid off due to budget cuts fortunately I directed a pantomime when I was at university, so so I knew the ropes, as it were. Oh, right, yes, but you're the maths teacher, aren't you? Uh, yes, that's me, Jeff Algebra, maths yes, teacher. Algebra. Yeah, maths is really important. Oh, thanks, Steve. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, maths is really important. Is theatre. It's one of the oldest art forms in history, Aristotle. Made. I just think that when we travel around all these problem schools and the poor kids see us, they say, hey, I really want to be like those attractive kids. Oh, good God. And that's God. a very beautiful and powerful thing. We That's an arrogant twat thing. And they touch us right back. I'm, I'm sure, sure they do. The surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And teach people about the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? Yeah. Well, they have to. To put into context, I play a young first year who's having some troubles at school. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah, because in a way she's like all, all of us. us. It's like a metaphor. Maybe she's you at home, or like maybe she's you. <laughs> Look at him on the end. Really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Oh, God, really brain death is yes, Thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm going to have a little chat with your teacher while you run off and get ready. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> That's it, that way. <clears throat> So, Jeff, when did you first hear about the grants? Uh, two days ago. A letter from Advance arrived at the school. Now, the headmaster thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin and brought it to me. Wow, how did you react? I also <laughs> threw it in the bin. <laughs> but then Harriet and Trey rescued it, and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page, and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. <laughs> Do you know what? It's funny, because Angela and I don't usually vote. We, we're not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic, mainly. Wow, what a way to describe your wife. Watch that Peter Clements can I slap it? show back in the day, and so we thought, uh, why not? Let's have a go with this old democracy thing. Okay. And here we bally well are. <laughs> Good stuff. Brilliant. Hey, so, twat. Let's have a look at a short section of Hey, Friendship. Hey. Hey. Friendship. Dear Diary, I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. Another day of tears. 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 Another day of fears. Fears. But still I walk the corridors alone. Alone. Dreading what might be around every corner. What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Good God, What's I wouldn't be if I saw that around the there. Corner? Oh, in my way, I'd be heading oh, around any Gary. corner. Oh, heavens no, it's Gary the Fist. Gary, Gary the, the Fist. Going somewhere, little first year? Great. I've been looking for some poor victim to bully all morning. 
but will this make me feel better about my violent father? Violent father? Excuse me, I'm late for maths. It's my favourite subject, and so important. Uh, Math is for losers. What? Math is for losers. My arm's stuck, coat. You're going f***ing! Right, uh, uh, maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? <laughs> not today, Gary the Fist. What do you mean, not today? Who are you? Oh, my arm's free coat. Brilliant, keep going. Oh, right, uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I'm Gary the Fist. He's Gary the and Fist. And you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads. Oh, God. Who's all alone. <laughs> that's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These well, I suppose that's one portrayal of prejudice. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. Is and she? And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. Okay. But, but I can't fight all three of you. I, I reckon, don't have any I reckon a dandelion own. seed could fight all three of them. To be honest. Take a look at me. She doesn't have a bad voice, it's better than a face. I'd, I'd rather not. I mean, I'm sorry, I don't know how many branches of the ugly tree hit you, but... I mean, they're not great singers, but they're not. Oh, apart from him. Oh, God. Wow. So stop now, make a different choice. She's kind of great as well, kind of strident. Hey, listen up, I won't take no crap. Who said middle class girls can't. Anyone who listened to you. Kids, I'm Gary the Fist. People think the folks like me probably shouldn't exist. But that's just prejudice, and I'd do better if you knew the way that I became Gary, Gary the Fist. Fist. Oh God, he's not much better either in the Fist department. I grew up on a council estate. The park was hip, but the flats weren't great. My dad used to come home drunk and late, and he'd hit my mum for dinner. He had to wait. Oh, where's my dinner? Women is wrong. <laughs> okay, I mean, getting anyone is wrong, and yeah, state. definitely, but. Life's pretty hard on a council estate. Life's pretty hard on a council estate. Life's pretty hard on a council estate. Oh, God, this is why you shouldn't let high schoolers do musicals. Life's pretty hard on a council estate. Life's pretty hard on a council estate. Life's pretty hard on a council estate. Life can be peachy key. If you work as a team, it's your choice to be me. Don't stop now. Listen to that inner voice. Friendship! Yes! Okay. Well, wow. thankfully that's all we have time for tonight on the National Nightly News. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. Well, thank God that musical's over. <laughs> Why bother strengthening your body, body when you can strengthen your face? face? We believe your skin deserves the best, so the new formula actively removes harsh chemicals from your skin. The high salt content actually pulls the dihydrogen monoxide Water. Right from your pores to give you the crisp. <laughs> Brittle skin you've come to expect. Wow! New Judico Shon will revitalize the appearance of the strength that I believe of your face and skin. 41% of women we surveyed said they loved their visible flakes, and 7 out of 10 dentists would recommend it. Judico Shon! <laughs>
Jiru Kashon, because we said so. Yeah, that's an appropriate advertising slogan, because we said so. No rational reason, just because the bloody ad says so. Wow. Alright, let's go back. Um, back. And rushes. The fallout. Fallout free roll. No, We're just I'm looking like, for what's sending back now. Fuck all tugs or something. Snuggle hugs? That's the bastard. Yeah, I wouldn't get one of those. My friend Janet says that. I nearly choked. Is this Janet who thinks dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Ten seconds, everybody! Not the best source of consumer advice, then. <laughs> Don't blame me when it explodes. One who mistrusts the moon. Four, three. Right, so we can step that on. Oh, that's done. Okay, Ellen James interview. Stop that. Alan James interview play. All that, a mega move for the group of young actors who are already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Can we get the guests in quickly, please? We actually had to make the book indestructible because people tried to set it on fire too much. It is, like, <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Bonfires Thanks for having centers, me. But, oh, I, tried James, to set his book on fire, I don't believe it. I try not to, if I'm honest. Behave. I'm going to the boss of <laughs> me. I literally am. <laughs> <laughs> Ten seconds, everybody. All right, this Can seems like start? there's not going to be anything else there. Get rid of the pause in case. I think that, yeah, people try and set his book on fire. That that sounds about right. Okay, yep. All the cameras are used up, so there's not going to be anything special. That's the end of that. Law and order. See what's happening there. I'm just saying I'll do what I can, that's all. Oh shit, you will. She's good, you know she is. I've set up a word in, that's all I can do. For Ten what? seconds, everybody. Is Widow JD scared of the big bad cultural reporter? If that's this cultural serious, reporter, I'm okay. Four, three. I think a cultural reporter. I don't think there's going to be anything on this one. Just to mention the cultural reporter there. So uh, I think we're going to be fast forwarding through this. And then it'll be Hey Friendship. Yeah, I've never had a barbershop quartet at, at a party I've been to. I feel really hard done by. Not commenting on the rest of it. Well, where is he? In his dressing room, probably banging his head against the wall. Look, it's alright, I've got this. I'm sure he's on his way. Come on, it's welcome back. How hard can it be? This is on you. Yeah, it's just because it everybody. welcomes black. We're going to open on <clears throat> Megan, camera two. Going in five, four, three. Don't need any of that. Welcomes black. I'm Megan Wolf, and on tonight's culture spot, I'll be chatting. Oh, Assets and Wealth Act, a oh, team of on... inspiring okay. young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College who did. And then we're on. Uh, I don't know what he said. Unfortunately, I guess his mag is muted. Lining up for the thing. And there they are, having a quick performance. through. It, I mean, it actually looks better in fast motion because you don't have to pay attention to it. All right, so there's just a couple of things there from the background. Disrupt tax, what's this? Oh. Continue. And it's time to check out my life, well, the lead character's life, Alex. Day 15, a late night. 
You arrive home after a long shift to find a note waiting for you on the countertop. You recognise Sam's hooded scroll. Chris has been evicted for not paying rent. Where is his headed? Sam's gone to pick up Chris's stuff from the street. Don't wait up. Underline twice. So this is your fault now, is it? You were so clearly pressed play on the cheap horror film you were going to watch together. It used to be an abs to absolutely terrify you as a kid, but always makes the two of you laugh. Yeah, it's nothing fr frightening about horror movies generally. Not the same without Sam, but you still chuckle to yourself occasionally. Just as you get to a good bit, the part where Candy decides to investigate alone. Don't they always? Your 14 year old son interrupts. He wants to go to a friend's house. He looks at you in a way only a child can, pleading, but somehow defiant. It's late night. No, you're staying home. No, he's not allowed out this late on a school night. Charlie's voice gets louder and louder. He sees you're not going to change your mind. You pretend that it's for my own good, but you really just want to be left alone. I hate you. He hesitates. He knows he's gone too far, but in his rage, he can't bring himself to back down. Before you can open your mouth, he storms up the stairs and slams his door. I'll check in on him before I head to bed. Give me a little space and check in on him. You knock on Charlie's door and when there's no answer you quietly open it. Your son is under the duvet sulking. He's determinedly facing the wall but once it's clear you're not leaving until he talks to you. He sighs and turns to face you. He needs to learn to control his temper. He begrudgingly apologises for his outburst and both of you sleep much easier having cleared the air. Moving on. So that was not too bad except the wife hates us now for what's happened with her brother and is apparently oblivious of the fact that I'd have ended up in jail if I'd given him my passport. A tight Christmas. You can't help but crack a smile as you look around the table. The snow has settled on the grass outside, the kids are pulling a cracker while your elderly mother tries to keep her eyes open. You always did have a soft spot for Christmas. You're sitting at the head of the table now, your dad's place. It's been a tense afternoon. Everyone can feel it. It's the first time you've seen Chris since you refused to part with your passport. It's a big change for Sam, the two siblings used to be inseparable. Christmas is usually such a nice time of the year, so she probably blames me the fact she hasn't seen him either. The clatter of cutlery is all that can be heard as Chris stares pointedly at you. Talk to Grandma, are you having a nice Christmas, Grandma? Your mother stares vacantly at you, confused. She comes back to herself with a start of recognition. Yes, thank you, Alex, it's lovely, she murmurs. Been happening more and more lately, poor old thing. The clatter of cutlery is all that can be heard as Chris stares pointedly at you. I'll make a toast. Try and raise some spirits. And some spirits. You stand and raise your glass. Merry Christmas everyone, I'm glad we're all here. There are murmurs of cheers and much clinking of glasses. Chris doesn't move. Yeah, we're all here, no thanks to you. Chris, sighs Sam, come on now, it's Christmas. Can't we put that behind us? Sam's right, I'll, I'll let it go, just let it go. It can. Sam's right, let's try and enjoy ourselves. Chris turns away from you taking some frustration out on a cheap cup of roast chicken. Your daughter Susie seizes the opportunity to corner you. You know how you love me? Oh god, this is not going anywhere good. You chuckle, it sounds familiar. I'm not going to like this, am I? Joke. Susie rolls her eyes. You know me and my friends are planning to go travelling this year, Z begins innocently. Well, I was hoping you'd help me with the money. He's interrupted by Chris and makes a derisive snort. I wouldn't hold your breath, Sue's not known for your generosity, are you, Alex? I'm not going to rise to that, I'm going to smile at my daughter. We'll see so many parts of the world and learn so much about other cultures, Sue's gushes. Yeah, but we broke as poor. Sigh and lower your voice. You know money is really tight now that Grandma's staying here. You just don't have that kind of money, Suze. But please, Harriet's parents are helping her. Yeah, maybe they're not looking after an extra family member. I wish we could, but we can't. What? You promised, your daughter yells. She looks from the face of one parent to the other and opens her mouth to speak. Instead, she looks out a frustrated shriek and buries her head in her hands. She starts to applaud. And the Parents of the Year Award goes to slap this bugger. Chris starts a sarcastic drum roll on the table. You look to Sam for support, but none is forthcoming. Pay no attention, Sue's Chris goes on. Alex has no time for their family, isn't that right? 
Can't bring yourself to speak. Pathetic. Piss puts an arm round Susie and escorts her out of the room. You'd have had her dad in jail, you dad bastard. Excuse me, I'm swearing at this. Sam follows without meeting your gaze. And you need to get over yourself and all. You know, you didn't say anything, did you? You know we're broadcast, Paul. What do you expect us to do? Charlie excuses himself awkwardly as you start to clear the place in sounds. Have you had a nice birthday, Pat? Your mother chimes in cheerfully. Oh, yeah. Merry effing Christmas. Moving on. Welcome, Windfall. You're leaping through the pile of accumulated posts. Each new bill pulls on your gut like a lead weight until a flash of blue makes you pause. Recognising the teal advance logo on the envelope, you tear it open. That's an irritating sound, but never mind. Dear Winston residents, thank you for sending us your passports for approval. Wouldn't have been able to do that if we'd given ours to him now, would we? We can now confirm the receipt and validation for the new assets and wealth redemption scheme. Hopefully this will make last month of argument with Sam worth it. As such, it's our pleasure to enclose a check which we hope you will see as a symbol, not only of our gratitude to you, but of our unwavering commitment to creating a society free of inequality. The throbbing of your fresh, speed-induced paper cut is the only reason you can believe you're awake. A check. A sizable one at that. Chris was right. Advance really are redisputing for the wealth. Yeah, and um, I'll talk to you afterwards. We will continue to strive for betterment of this nation and, and its people. Forwards together, Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement. The way that we financial burden lessens slightly. It's bliss. Long weekend. Why does the zip on this damn case never close? It's your anniversary. Every year you and Sam go away for the weekend, usually camping. You're not made of money. You've been looking forward to it for ages, finally getting some time alone where you can forget about the noise of life. No kids, no work, just a bit of romance and some peace and quiet. The zip finally gives up the battle and you drag the bulging suitcase down the stairs. The answering machine is blinking in the hall. Good evening, Alex. This is Mr. Bozeman. Oh God, the boss is calling. I'm calling to inform you that you'll be required to work this weekend. No, I don't think I will. Your heart sinks. Some information has come to light concerning the rising tensions between our nation and foreign powers. And the National Nightly News team will be working around the clock, ensuring we break the story first. Needless to say, I will expect your attendance tomorrow morning, 8am sharp. Have a pleasant evening, Alex. Shock turns to annoyance and fury. Are you going to tell Sam? Sam comes downstairs bringing with excitement. Kissing you, they grab their car keys from the dish and start to load your bags into the back. Screw that. I already said I'm doing my, my quota and that's it. I need this time with my wife. Let's go. Need this weekend. Message deleted. What was that? Came a voice behind you. Nothing important, you reply as you put on your coat. Adrenaline coursing through your body. Grabbing Sam round the waist, you practically slam the front door. Might as well enjoy your time off. You're going to pay for it on Monday. Yes, I'm sure we will. An unwelcome return. When you get back to work Monday morning, you get some sour looks from your exhausted colleagues. A note sits waiting for you. The immaculate script is blood red. I'm very disappointed, Winston. Is it worth it? A permission slip. Your son Charlie hovers at your elbow as you read. Do you find yourself striving to achieve? Are you an active member of the team? <coughs> Do you like reaping the benefits of cooperation? Join the advanced go getters today. Forwards, together. Doesn't sound like the youth club that you told you about. Charlie grabs a flyer from you and throws a form into your hand. So I can walk down straight from school and Ben's sister can drop us home afterwards. So you won't have to do anything. Well, honestly I don't like it, but I'll let him make his own decisions on this. I don't necessarily think it's a good move. But given I've had to say no to some things for both him and my daughter, 
I'm gonna have to say yes to this. Your son is Phil. It's heartwarming to see him so passionate about becoming an active member of the community. It can only be a good thing. I hope so. We've been going on almost four months at this point. A profitable partnership. After a particularly long day at work, you come home to find posts sorted into piles. As Sam has taken to doing recently. Most of it is the usual rubbish. But a letter with an increasingly familiar advanced logo and urgent respond immediately plastered on the front in correspondingly urgent red font grabs your attention. Best to get it over with. Dear Winston residents, this letter is to inform you that the advanced government has taken another step forward in our fight for equality by nationalising the largest private corporations of the world. And they disputing their resources among the citizens of this great country. The Partnership Bonds, uh, Bonds program ensures the wealth created by the people is delivered to the people. But remember this being in the manifest well that it is building wealth in bad ways. Every household will become a partner in one of three carefully selected institutions. Chosen by advance for consistent high performance and financial security. Please note, all returns are based on public opinion and cannot be guaranteed. Please select one of the following. You've got Aya the Behold Incorporated, whether it's cosmetics, clothing, or couture, we see the beauty in all our customers. Neil's Deals Limited, it's always a steal from Grey to Neil. Or Pleasure Corps, our business is your pleasure. From sport to travel or even just some you time, you can, can't say pleasure without leisure. Neil's Deals, we're always promoting them. Thank you for making your decision. Uh, please return this form using the envelope provided and you will receive a report for your partnership in three to six working months. Seems that even advanced can't defeat the quagmire of governmental bureaucracy. The future of this nation is in partnership. Forward Skeller, Julius Salisbury and Peter Clement. Yeah, if we're promoting them, Mark might work in our favour. Day 120. Teenage Rebellion. You step out of your old car in silence, Sam slams the door, and you wince, hoping the door won't come off its hinges. You don't say anything, now's not the time. As you approach the front desk, you feel physically sick. The police officer asks you to wait. Eventually, after what seems like an eternity, your daughter is brought out by an officer. Oh, what the hell have we been up to? With a kind face. She's a good kid, but if we pick her up with graffiti again, we'll have to charge her. You nod and apologise on Susie's behalf as Sam hugs her shell-shocked daughter. You shake your hand, the officer, lo uh, the officer lowers her voice. Keep her away from that boy, and I think she'll be fine. We've been dating. In the car, you attempt to broach the subject, but Susie refuses to say a word. After a while, you give up your questions about who this boy might be and just drive. How is Lady you stare at the ceiling, worrying? The stillness in your bedroom is the only sign that Sam is also wide awake. Who is Susie hanging out with? Why is she acting out? Neither of us are going to sleep tonight. Things ain't looking good on the daughter front, but at least our son's happy at the moment. Five months in. And as we return to the broadcasting studio for the Tempest, this is where we break for today. In the meantime, if you want the channel to grow, hit the like, comment and subscribe. But let me make a couple of comments on this game. One of the great things about this, I mean, it's taking a side swipe, <laughs> I love the humour, it's taking a side swipe at modern culture, the wealthy, the poor, governments that sound good but are actually uh, tyrants, um, modern advertising, culture, you name it. Uh, soundbite news and everything. Companies that expect too much from their employees. Maybe employees that don't give enough, who knows. One of the things I like about it, some of the things that Advance are promoting, I agree with. Over the last 50 years or so, there has been an upward distribution of wealth that has hurt the poor and the middle class. It needs to be a redistribution. But the way they're doing it is absolutely not good. It's random, it's atrocious. And 
in doing that, in attacking me on my own ground, make me look at myself as well, and I like that in a game. Anyway, as I say, hit the like, comment, and subscribe. Help the channel grow. I'll see you around.